Welcome back to Fast Friday RC, and today I want to take you through the build process of the 114th scale Tamiya Pole trailer. Now, it's an interesting trailer, I have to say. I mean, it was a lot of fun to build because, I, as I'd said earlier in a different video, that it is very unique. Uh, it's not your typical uh, fifth wheel trailer in that sense because it's actually being pulled not only by the load but by the pin hinge, which is on at the end of this but let, let, let's start from the beginning of the uh, the build i found one of the hardest things um, to do when building this is the one of the very first steps in the instruction manual which is building the pole now i say this because there's something you have to understand that if you are intending to put the tamiya light set in this trailer um, whether you decide to do it after or before, the one thing you should do is put the brackets in place uh, that are for the wiring for the trailer. Because if you decide to skip that step and put the lights in later and expect to put the light brackets in place after the fact, you will need to take the trailer apart to do so and the whole pole system. So as you can see here, um, there is a, a screw that you put in here which attaches it and makes it solid. So if you're only pulling the trailer, then and it's this short, uh, everything is, is tight. But obviously, as you can see, you can extend this pole to whatever length. But these pieces right here, they tell you that if you're going to put the light set on, you would need to attach those first. So there's two there, and I've added a third on this second secondary pole right here. Uh, and then in the third pole, you can see there's one right at the start. Uh, and this part doesn't move, but there's one here. So there's one, two, three, four other clips that need to be attached. Now, in order to do, um, even to take this part off, um, I would heavily suggest that you put them on first uh, so that you're not having to take anything apart. Uh, and especially from the back end, because uh, one of the things here is when you take this part off, there's, a, there's the threads for the next pole that goes on. This does not go over top of that. It, it, it won't go over the top. So you have to take it from behind, which as you can see, that's now completely underneath, which means you're gonna end up having to take the whole thing apart. So I would just suggest that if you're going to put the lights on this trailer, to put these brackets in place first, and they're just there. Because now when I decide to put the uh, lights on, I just have to buy the lights and, and attach it and run it through. Um, but that's, you know, that'll come up next. I haven't bought those lights yet, but that's okay. So the other th interesting thing about this is I had wondered whether I was going to get the, uh, the um, support leg electronic uh, apparatus for that so that, you know, you can have the retractable legs automatically. But then it occurred to me when I was building this, you're never going to do that with this trailer because there is only one support leg for the trailer. Because literally, if I was to, if I just let release that and put the trailer down, it pretty much is standing level anyway. You don't need the support leg. It obviously tilts down a bit, as you can see, as you can see. So obviously, if you pull the support leg out, it's now completely level. But really, the support leg is only there to uh, basically level it out uh, and keep it steady but really the support legs aren't necessarily needed because it pretty much supports itself. So that was interesting because it means you can't, and you can't use the uh, uh, electronic support legs for this kit. Uh, one of the other things that's of interest is, and I do this with all uh, the kits that I build, I put the ball bearings in them. Um, I, prefer to remove the plastic bushings just because from a wear and tear perspective it makes more sense to do it and with a kit like this you're only looking at eight bearings so why not um, as you can see I actually always I'm, I'm, I'm starting to find I prefer painting the uh, the white lettering because when this thing is in motion I think that's gonna look really really sharp 
uh, on the road when it's being pulled because otherwise it's just the black rubber and I just I just I don't know I just find that it adds something to the look of the vehicle so that's what I've done but I've, I've actually run this across the floor and it just goes on forever with the bearing so the, the setup is 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 extremely smooth so I'm happy with that um, I know on a couple of pieces on here that they have stickers that are the safety stickers and they go on you can see here on the on the front on both sides now I've chosen not to do it and I don't know why but there's something about it when you see it and I've seen other videos with it on it gives the trailer of, of how to put it, it it makes the trailer look more European than I want it to because a lot of the European trailers have markers all over it and stickers that have like the yellow and black and it's just like warning signs. You don't see that a, lo a lot on the North American trucks. And I'm really wanting to build this as a North American trailer. So I've chosen not to do it. Now, I, I personally kind of like it bare. So I'm, not, I'm, you know, I may change my mind later, but at this point, I don't want to have the markings on there at all. So right now this is this is how it's going to be. I have put the side marker, marker lights in and as you can see um, I've put in some of the, the uh, uh, hazard uh, you know the reflectors on the back, the license plate, a couple things on the tires but I'm not putting the safety markings on. That's just it's a personal choice so I've just decided not not to do it. There was one other piece on here that I think you need to be aware of, is that when you're building this piece, which is what swivels when you're towing the poles or whatever load you want to put on it, um, there's one for the front, and then there's one which is the fifth wheel. You can see that's the piece that's going to fit into this, the semi-trailer at the top. Um, when you're building this, it shows you putting in these screws the one two three four five six seven eight on either side because these plastic pieces come to you know are put in place and you, you screw them down then when that's finished there's double-sided tape and then you put the wood strips down be very careful that you've made sure that the screws that you put in are the right size. I made the error of one of them got was too long, so I put on the double-sided tape. I, and I mean, it's minor difference, but it was enough that when they were screwed tight, the wood wouldn't go down, and I had to go through and figure out which are the screws that were wrong. So just be careful when you're when you're putting these two brackets together that you've got the right screw before you put down the wood um, and the double-sided tape. I, I managed to fix it. You know early enough that it wasn't going to cause a problem but I hadn't noticed it um, so that's one step that I would be careful on um, and I would be careful with the with the pole itself because I noticed that when I was putting this together not only is are these uh, for the the uh, the light sets that can be tr um, problematic uh, or a little tricky but also when you're putting this together just make sure you're putting these in the right spot before you put it together because you will have to constantly take it apart again to re and redo it, which I did. So there's a couple of tricky places that um, it's just worth putting, uh, putting a little extra attention onto when you're, when you're building it. The other one that's interesting is that I'm intending on having this pulled by my Cascadia Evo. Now I will be doing a build video on that rig, but I haven't yet. Uh, I've had some, just some, mechanical or electrical issues in building it that haven't been quite as smooth as I was hoping for. So I will be coming out with a video on that, um, which is kind of exciting. But one of the things that I knew is that I wanted this to be towed by it. And I was looking for uh, how this has all got to be pieced together. Now the pole trailer manual talks about uh, the globe liner, it talks about the king hauler, grand hauler, but it never mentioned the Cascadia. So. I went and took a look at the manual for my Cascadia and where it talks about step 33 on where you put the light harness it actually says make three millimeter holes to attach the joint catcher. 
which means that there's m no real major modification to the Cascadia when when I've put it together to put this on. So it's actually going to work out quite well. And the and the catcher they're talking about is this bracket right here, which is going to attach to the back of where the lights are on the Cascadia. And you can see the three millimeter uh, screw holes. That's just going to attach onto the back so that this pin, if I hold this up again, you can see that this is the pin that's going to be holding it. You put uh, this through the hole. In fact, let's do it this way. Put that through the hole, then the pin catcher. And then there's going to end up being a, uh, a pin that's going to lock that in place. So that's going to make it very easy to attach to the Cascadia. So that was great. So that solved. But two, interest, two other interesting things I noticed. I don't know whether you can tell right there or not, but the trailer is much shorter than the flatbed trailer, which I thought was interesting. So putting them side by side, it's quite a bit lower, and I was actually expecting them to be pretty even. Um, but the one piece that I really like about the pole trailer, just from a North American trailer point of view, is the back end, because it has the typical safety bar that you see on all North American trailers. This bracket right here. That, you see that on every trailer, whether it be a box trailer, a flatbed, whatever it is, you always see this in the North American marketplace, which is an odd thing because if you look at the flatbed, whoops, there isn't one. Um, and that's how it's, that ha is how their trailer is built. But, on every typical North American trailer you're going to see it on the road, it has the bracket. So I think it's great that on the pole trailer, you've got it. And I think it, I just think it makes a difference. I think it just looks that much more realistic as a North American uh, trailer. So anyway, that's that's just an interesting point from my end that um, I was kind of, uh, I knew it wasn't on the flatbed, but it was nice to see on the pole trailer. So between all of that, I would have to say it was um, a really fun build and I'm looking forward to getting this all attached to my Cascadia when it actually is finished. Uh, and then I'm gonna try and, and, and test it out with a bunch of different loads. I mean, currently, I suppose it can be my load because it's a not, you see that on uh, North American roads all the time that they're, the trailer's pulling another trailer. So I'll probably do that for now. But all in all, I really enjoyed putting this trailer together. I, I really enjoy the 114th scale uh, semi series. Uh, and I can't wait for Tammy to come out with some newer versions of their North American trucks and some North American trailers. I'm actually hoping they'll, they'll you know, come up with some, some of their moving trailers or the car carrier trailers or, or just some other uh, choices because I think there is a real market there for it and I'd, I'd just love to be able to build, uh, build some more in this series. So those are all the tips and tricks I have for you for the 114th scale Tamiya pole trailer. However, if you're interested in seeing the entire build process from start to finish, I did document the whole thing and that comes up right after this. So feel free to stick around. Otherwise, I'll see you again in another video.